In this video, I'm going to be making a Roman numeral 10 as a replacement for this antique clock. Now, we have the number 11, and we're going to be using that as our guide uh, to know how we can make the number 10 to match the original. So the number 11 had a pin in the back, actually had two pins in the back, but I broke one off. And so here I'm just using a little bit of copper wire and folding it to create a replacement or a pin for the back of the number 10. So here's the pin that we'll be using for the back of our number 10. And you'll see how that's attached here in just a bit. Now I'm measuring the original. I'll just redraw this in my CAD system and print it out on my laser printer so that I can cut a template that we can use for making the replacement numeral. Found a little piece of copper and it's a little thicker than what was used on the original numeral. And so here I'm just using a ball peen hammer to kind of stretch it and thin it out a bit uh, so that we have something similar to the original. Putting a little spray adhesive on our template and sticking it to the piece of copper. And then I'll just take the uh, set of 10 snips and cut it down basically to size. And once I'm close, I'll file it right up to our template. Now, at this point, I realized that we're going to be adding a dome to the shape of it, which is going to require a little bit more copper uh, so that as we add the dome, it comes back to the same diameter. So I'm stretching it out a bit more there. And then here I'm dropping it into a dapping block and I'll just tap it into there to add that dome shape to it. And then you'll see that the diameters come back to about the original. Here I'm putting it on a tripod and I'm going to be attaching the little wire that will be used to attach it to the clock uh, using some vitreous enamel. And this will also be what we use on the surface. So I'm going to dump a little bit into the back of the numeral and it's basically powdered glass. And I'll uh, push it around a little bit there and try to get it into the middle of our little holding wire. And now I'm heating it up with the torch. and so you'll see it go through a kind of a sugary consistency and then flow out and then I will take the heat off of it and as it cools down you'll see it turn back to that white glass color and uh, that's a pretty close match for how the original was attached and so I'm pretty pleased with that. Now just cleaning up the front of the numeral a little bit of fire scale on it from using the torch on it and a little bit of alcohol and this is a holding agent uh, which will help the powdered enamel stick to the surface of that dome. So I'm putting a little bit of this on and, and it will dry out and then when we fire it it won't uh, cause any problems with the enamel. Uh, it's made especially for this process. So here I'm just sifting the enamel on and trying to get a nice even coat on the surface of the little copper dome there. Got it up on a couple of nuts um, just to make allowance for that pin out the back. And again, I'm using the torch to uh, flow the enamel. And uh, I think we've got a pretty close match to the original. Looks like we've got a few more little flecks of, um, you know, maybe copper uh, oxides or something in there than the original, but I'm pretty pleased with that. This is a marking compound uh, made by a company called Ceramark, and it's made for marking ceramic and glass using a laser. The original was probably painted and refired with a paint on it, um, but we're doing it a little bit more modern here. So I imported a Roman numeral into my CAD system, and I'm just massaging it a bit to try and make it look like the original numeral. Here I'm making a little template using the laser so that I know right where to set the numeral in place so that we can mark it right in the center. Now what's happening here is that marking compound that's sprayed on black in color has dried to a gray color and where it's being hit by the laser it's actually bonding it to the surface of the glass almost firing it on a you know a four thousandths of an inch scale to the surface of the ceramic. Where it hasn't been hit by the laser, as you'll see in just a minute, it will just rinse right off. But the portions that have been hit by the laser are now bonded to the face of the ceramic. So for a first pass, I think we're getting pretty close to a duplicate of the original.